Now we can discuss dedicated designs and I will start from older to newer. So I'm starting with MD5, sorry, MD4. Uh, it was developed by Ronald Vivas in 1990. And as far as I know, it wasn't publicly announced, but it was reverse engineered. The block size uh, in this algorithm is 512 bits and the message digest length, so the output hash length is 128 bits. Number of runs are 48 and its type is Merkle Damgard. An idea is given in this picture. So you have state words of 32 bits, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, and MI is the item message word. So actually you have message blocks of 512 bits, but you are uh, adding message words from here. So you divide them into uh, 32 bits uh, words. So there you will have 16 MIs here. So this uh, square addition symbol is modular addition of 32 bits. So it's a just normal addition, but you won't have a carry bit after the uh, addition of the 32 bits. So this is not an XOR, but a modular addition. So idea is simple. You put your IV to these words initially, and you perform very simple operations in this F function, like and or or not operations, which I will be showing in in MD5 actually. So you add these values to AI, and you uh, add your message word here. Then you add a constant, perform of uh, eight bits of left rotation, and then uh, switch the places of these words. So this is your single round, and you have to repeat it 48 times. So. Uh, very simple design, easy to implement. But the problem is that uh, we know uh, how to find collisions for this algorithm. Actually generating a collision takes a few microseconds. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, the best pre-image attack requires two to the four, uh, 95 operations. But of course, since this is an old algorithm, maybe with today's knowledge, if cryptographers uh, analyze it more, uh, we can get better attacks or maybe uh, intelligence agencies has better attacks already. So I don't know, but this is the best published so far. So it was IETF standard hash function defined in RFC 1320, but it was retired in 2011 with uh, RFC 6150. So as you can see, we have a broken algorithm we, where we can uh, generate collisions in a few microseconds, but it wasn't retired until 2011. So it takes a long time to uh, replace cryptographic algorithms. So this is why we should pay attention more to cryptanalysis results. But this influenced later designs like MD5, SHA-1 and RIPE-MD. So let's look at uh, MD5. It is again uh, developed by uh, Ronald Rivers in 1995, 1991 to replace MD4. Block size is the same. Message digest length is the same. The change is that number of runs is now 64. In MD4, this was 48. So adding more runs, of course, provides more security in this uh, kind of attacks because most of the attacks are like differential type. And it is still Merkle Damgard. As you can see, the picture is the same. And you might ask, what is the difference? Now we have an extra addition here. So this is the difference. The rest is the same. So in overall, we have two differences. One of them is the addition of this addition and increase in the number of runs. So let's look at what is inside this FI. So you take three words as input B, C, D, and uh, for every 16 round, uh, F function works like this. In the first 16 round, it is B and C or not B and D. And in the next 16 rounds, it becomes a G function. And so uh, places and some operations change. In the third version, it is just XOR of values and so on and so forth. So a very simple design. It was very fast. But the problem is that uh, although the number of rounds are increased, we can still find collision and generating a collision requires two to the 18 uh, hash operations. And this takes less than a second in a, a regular computer, even in a uh, laptop, you can do it less than a second. 
And uh, premium resistance is 2 to the 123.4 operations. And uh, recall that if we go back, message digest length is 128 bits. So a brute force attacks for the premium resistance is that 2 to the 128. You need to, uh, to perform 2 to the 128 hash operations to find the pre image. So this is reduced to this number. And for collision due to the birthday paradox, it should require 2 to the uh, 64. But uh, due to the attacks in the literature, this number is reduced to 2 to the 18. So as you can see, it is broken. So in uh, 2004, it was shown how to create a pair of files that share the same MD5 checksum. So this is really dangerous because this way you can uh, cause a lot of problems to cloud services uh, because two different files will have the same uh, MD5 hash, mean that uh, the cloud might delete one of them and just keep the other one because uh, it will think that both files are the same. Or similarly, you can reach to a file which you don't have, but uh, if you know the hash value of it, you can try to uh, make claims like that you have that uh, file and try to download it from the cloud. In 2005, Lanstra, Wang and Vega demonstrated construction of two X.509 certificates with different public keys and the same MD5 hash value. And in 2008, it is shown how to fake SSL certificate validity. So certificate authorities should stop using MD5. And in 2012, the authors of Flame Malware used an MD5 collision to forge a Windows code signing certificate. So as you can see, a collision in a hash function can cause all of these problems. For this reason, uh, people should never use MD5. But strangely enough, when I talk to people in Turkey, uh, even to uh, high school instructors and in the area of computer, science they said that they thought md5 was secure so they told me that they are always using md5 which is really strange because we will even claim that sha1 is broken and uh, suggest people to move to sha2 and md5 collision example is as follows so x1 and x2 are two different inputs both of them are 512 bits and uh, they look the same, but differences are shown in red. So in this case, in the hexadecimal value, this is seven, but here it is F. So the leftmost bit is zero here, and it is one here. So you are introducing a small difference, like here, A to two. So this is a differential type collision attack. Uh, you are giving small differences to these places, but if you perform the MD5 hash, you will see that both of these values, although they are different, would provide the same output hash value like this. So it is an example to MD5 collision. Now let's move on to SHA-1. This is developed by NSA and it was first published in 1993, but then they made a small modification. So for this reason, the initial version is referred to as SHA-0 and uh, the original version with this uh, small modification uh, which is done in 1995, is now known as SHA-1. So I'm not sure, but maybe there was in the uh, rotation here. They added this one, or maybe this one, I'm not sure, but uh, I kind of recall it that it was this one. And if you don't do add this single bitwise rotation, then the algorithm becomes really weak, by the way. So ID is as follows, it looks, uh, again, similar to uh, MD5, but now we have a, something uh, different because instead of uh, stopping at D, now we have an, another word E. So instead of 128 bits, now we have 160 bits. So this is your uh, IV initially. You again perform operations like rotation and F operations like in the ones in the MD5. You perform modular addition and you keep um, uh, adding your message words from here and you add some constant and do those operations. So as you can see, now the message digest length is increased and it is 160 bits. 
this is just to have uh, more security against uh, birthday paradox. And number of runs are again uh, increased. Now it is 80. So uh, it was thought that this would be enough to have security. So let's see an uh, example how this algorithm works. So this is one of the test vectors from this document. So assume that I'm going to take the uh, SHA-1 hash of uh, message ABC. So if you just uh, create a text file and write ABC in it and perform SHA-1 operation on it, the hash uh, output will be like the one I'm going to show in three slides later. So you start with this. So initially your A, B, C, D, E values are initialized to IV. This is fixed and you can find it in, a, in any NIST document or any standardization document. Now, uh, since the block size is 512 bits, this means that 16 32 bit values. So we start writing our message to here. So this is a one block example because our message is uh, can fit into 512 bits. So ABC is, if you think about it in the ASCII table, it will be 61, 62, and 63. Now, as you can see, there's an extra 80 here. This is because I'm performing padding. So I'm putting a single one bit and then fill, it, fill the rest with zeros. As you can see, the remaining words are zero, zero. And finally, I have something different than zero. And this is actually uh, represents the length of the message I'm taking the hash of. So ABC is just uh, three bytes, which is 24 bits. And if you turn this value into integer, you will see that it will uh, give you 24. So this is the thing that you are going to take the hash of. If you go back to the picture, so your H0, H1, H2, H3, and H4 is this. Your WIs are, will be added from here. And you will perform this operation 80 times. So if you perform that round operation a single time, this will be the values of A, B, C, D, E. So here, you take them here and perform the operation again. So this way, it keeps changing and changing. After 80 rounds, you obtain this A, B, C, D, E values. So the output as the hash you are going to produce is as follows. As you can see, these values are now written here. And these are your initial hash values, which were the IV. So you add them together and the result is your now the hash. So uh, calculating the SHA-1 hash of ABC message is just this. And again, this is not an XOR as you can see if you add one to five, if you XOR it, it will be four, but now it is six, so this is still a modular addition. So this is an example of how a Merkle-Damgaard construction actually works.